So now we're at the end of our animation, and I'm going to click the path here of this walkthrough number two. And here in the plan view, I can see the results of that path. I'm going to click Edit Walkthrough. And using this path here that's active, I can see the last keyframe is about here, the red dot, at the end of my walkthrough. I want to walk into the interior of this first floor plan. This is the first level where I walk through the door. I will walk in between these two countertops here toward this back wall. I'll turn left and ultimately stop the camera about here looking toward the living room of this interior. So to do that and make it part of the exterior animation that we started, I'm first going to get us to the last frame by typing 300, which is right there, which is this view here. To lengthen an animation, rather than make a completely new animation, I'd like to make one continuous animation that takes us inside as opposed to making one animation exterior and making a completely separate animation for the interior. I like these to be one continuous animation. So I'm gonna take the camera where it's located currently here, and I'm gonna change this options bar here to become add keyframe. And I'm gonna give myself a few keyframes. And let's think about how many we need. I wanna place one about here at the front door inside, another one here, another one about here, and the final one here. So ultimately, I need one, two, three, four preliminarily. So I'm going to add four keyframes to the end of this path and simply put my mouse on the path with the Add Keyframe option here. And I'm going to put it behind the last four. Put the last dots here be, be behind the very last keyframe that we had. And then what I'll do is I'll change this to the path command where we can actually physically move the camera. I want to move those dots into the first level. So I'm going to grab that very last one and put it here that we discussed earlier. I'm going to grab the one before it and put it here. The one before that, put it here. One before that, put it here. And I'll slightly adjust the last view there and move myself closer to the door. So these are my current positions of the keyframes. Now here you'll notice that the that this creates a big loop that really gets me pretty much a crisscross this stove and refrigerator here. And I'd rather straighten out that, that path there rather than make this loop happen. So to make that happen, I would add another keyframe and put it between this keyframe and that keyframe there, somewhere in the middle. And then with the path command, again, used in my options, I'm going to move that up. And there you can see a more uh, closer to a straight line here. I'll make a few more adjustments here. And then taking myself back a few frames under Edit Walkthrough, back a few keyframes, I'm going to adjust the target. So here with the active camera turned on here, I'm going to grab this target and look toward the kitchen again, where we were, watch, be careful not to touch a background. There's the view we were starting with about right there. Under edit walkthrough, next keyframe is here. I'm, a, I'm going to look toward in favor of the kitchen a little bit here. I'm then going to go next keyframe here, which is looking down in between these two fixtures. I'm going to move the target to be to look straight ahead. I'm going to hit next keyframe. It's already beginning to turn its head. In which case, I am actually going to look more straight ahead here so as not to make it look like I'm walking through this countertop. I'm going to look in this direction here toward that door. Ultimately, when I the next, reach the next keyframe here, I'm looking toward this wall, but I'd rather look straight ahead and see less of this wall here. I'm actually going to turn my head very quickly toward the, the left here and favor the space. And then by the time I reach for the last keyframe here, I'm looking toward the center of the living room where I can adjust this target and basically take a look at exactly what I want to view 
looking through that camera. So let's back that up. Previous keyframe, previous keyframe. Take it back a step to here. And I can watch the animation from this vantage point. With this view activated here, I can then use the play button and watch what happens between those last four keyframes. I may need to adjust the speed later. Hit play. And there's your animation from those positions through the door, back toward the counter. In between the counter toward the closet, I'm taking a left here, and I'm walking toward the living room and stopping the animation at that point there. Again, using any of the tools that we've discussed earlier with this plan view active, I can adjust the camera position with this target. The position, the physical position of the camera is the path. The actual target, what the camera is looking at, is the active camera. We can add keyframes, and we can also remove keyframes. It's no longer necessary. So if I click on 300, I can then take a look at where the camera's speed was. And you see it picked up the speed of the last keyframe and made the next keyframe the same speed. So the interior is going to be very slow as I take in the interior design of this space. With that being said, the animation is complete. I can then roll this back up to number one. And from the 3D view here, walk through number two, I can play the entire animation and confirm that everything I see is exactly what I expected. I can then make some adjustments and slow things down if necessary. I'm now in the interior of the space, walking through the countertops there. And I'm done. Finally, this viewport here has a visual style and currently set to hidden. If I make changes to the viewport, uh, each of these changes are going to cause the animations to slow down a, a bit, depending on the speed of your, your computer. Uh, but I could uh, change the style here or I can even go as far as changing the graphic display options. And for example, I could give myself a background, perhaps a, a gradient background here. Again, I could modify any of these settings here. If I wanted this to be more gray, I will do a sort of black and white rendering here. Hit apply and get a gray onto a gray ground. I could turn on my ambient and shadows here based on the position of the sun currently. This is this side of the building is heavily in shadow. So I'd probably want to change the setting of my sun to be maybe top left in this example. There, the sun's in this location. Therefore, this entire rendering is a, is a wash with light and shadows. I can then tone down the, the darkness of these shadows here. Hit apply. Make it a little bit lighter, for example, here. And then with that visual style set up in your viewport here, in this view, I could take a view, take a look at my animation, edit walk through and play. And you'll notice that the computer will begin to slow down and the experience will be much slower than it was previously. So, for example, here it's beginning. Uh, to walk down the hill, but you see it's a little more choppy. But again, everything we're looking at is a preview. Ultimately, I'll, I'll hide those people and record this animation. But I'm walking down toward the courtyard. Those shadows give the space more life, more, uh, more of a 3D look. Here, I begin to slow down the animation as I'm passing this person here, looking toward the interior. At any given time, you can hit Escape and stop this animation, hit escape, and then that'll interrupt the animation. But you get the idea what it is we're looking at. It begins again, so I'm gonna hit escape again. And this time I'm gonna say yes, I'll accept the, the cancellation. See if I can get it to stop here. Yes, are you sure you wish to stop? Yes, I do. The animation stops, it goes back to the first frame. But if I'd like to take this animation and turn it into an actual movie outside of Revit, 
I can go to the application button here, the big R, and go export, scroll down to animation, walk through, click that option, and here I can create an animation. This is the current size that's listed here. This percentage will decrease the size of the animation. The larger the animation, the slower it will it'll take to generate the animation. So I can begin to test this. Using a wireframe makes for a very, very fast animation. And at 20% the thought, excuse me, I accidentally picked, uh, picked the wrong button there. Back to export animation walkthrough. I can make this 50% of the size and you'll see these will shrink. I can make this also a hidden line and this will make for a very quick animation as compared to a lengthier one where I go hidden or shaded or shaded with edges and colors. Each of these subsequent choices make things go really, really slow in terms of the timing required to build the animations. Um, so you can do tests here hit OK, or you can actually go ahead and do your uh, hidden line view with these settings here on the right. This is 50% of the actual size. Again, this for me, this is just a test. I hit OK. This will make a, uh, an animation. I hit Save. And then you see here in the bottom left, uh, this will show you the process. This is uncompressed. Therefore, this is the quality you're going to get from the animation. You can choose lower quality. For example, any of these options here, We'll get a compressed version. The quality will diminish, but you want to have those created as test cases so that you don't see anything major wrong with your animation since these do take a while to create. But if you're happy with everything you've seen and tested so far, you can simply hit OK and uncompressed gives you the best quality. Hit OK and then your computer begins to process the animation, which will take quite some time. There's 300 frames uh, currently that are being processed. And there's 15 frames for every second to get to 300. And you can see in the bottom left here, this is the progress bar showing you where you are in the animation. So you'll have to sit through uh, this experience on your own and ideally walk away from your computer or let this run overnight. And by morning, you'll have a nice animation of your of your project. Ideally, you would turn off these 3D people so they don't appear in your animation uh, since they were only used as placeholders to set up the height of the camera. Uh, but that's it for the tutorials on animations. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and can use these to create your own animations. Looking forward to seeing your work. Contact me anytime with questions. Thank you very much.